Բարև ձեզ հարգիլի բարեկամներ, սպուրկի ձայնը հեռուստահանդեսը դարձյալ ձեզ հետ է։ Այսօր բայմ հաղորդում ուզում եմ սկսեր ձեզ ներկայացնելով նորին սուրպոծություն տել տեր առամ առաջին մեծի տանքի Հայրապետական։ Վեհապար հայրապետի հետ շպվելու, նրա իմ աստուն և սղտանցխոս կլսելու, շտապելու են եկել ոչ միայն սուրպ սարկիս եկեղոցվոց խականները։ Վերջին շորջանում Վեհապար հայրապետի ելույթները աշխարի հրջակավոր � Մեր ժողովուրդը եկեղեցո ճանքով աստոտո ներկայությունը աբրեցալ։ Եվ ժիշտանը համար դեմ ժողովուրդը պատկության խողոտ խոտորիքներ ընդիմած մնաց կանքում։ Մենք պոլորը սկուսումնաց իրատ ե չարդ տեսած էին, հարյուն դարին է անած չեր ասխալություն տեսանք մեն։ Մեր տեսակ տեսակ թշնամիները հալածեցին մեզ, ասպաննեցին չարդեցին մեզ։ Սակայն էր ժողովուրդը աբրեցավ դրաշտի համազոր է, մեր ժողովուրդին � Աստուծո հետ երանք, աստուծո ներգայությունը աբրեցանք։ Եվ անվոր աստուծո հետ է, աստված իր հետն է, ինչպես առակյալը գսե, եթե աստված մեզի հետ է, աստված մեզի համար է, աստված մեր գոմն է, ով գրտա մեզի հակարա� հոտորիք ներուն մեջ, բատմության արինոտ ծպանք ներուն թիմաց, մենք մնացինք։ Աչամպույրի առառողությունը գիլիկյո կատողիկոսին առավել մերցանալու հնարավորություն էր, առավել եվս, որ վեհապար հայրապետա այնքան սրտաբաց Այս մտերմիկ և ջերմ շպումը շառունակվեց եկեղեց խոսրահում ուր հոգևոր առաղությունից հետո հավակված ժողովուրդը վայելեց վեհապար հայրապետի ներկայությունը իրենց կողթին։ Եկեղեցվո հոգևոր հովիվ տեր նարեք կահանատ հրդերյանը մի քանի հարցեր էր պատրաստել հղելու համար վեհապարին։ Հարցեր, որոնք կարելի է ասել մեր բոլորի մտքի մեջ էին։ I guess everybody who is here this evening would like to know more about the lawsuit that the Armenian Catholic Osset is pursuing. That part that I was wondering, is there any possibility that you can tell us a little bit more about the details of this important step? After 100 years, we cannot continue in this way. Of course, we have to continue remembering, commemorating our martyrs. We should continue demanding recognition of the genocide perpetrated by the Ottoman Turkish government of the time. But beyond that, uh, I thought that 100 years is a sort of a waking 
a waking up call for all of us that we should do something, something more, something different for our martyrs, for the Armenian cause. And that is why I thought that we have to move from the stage of recognition to the stage of compensation, restoration, restitution, and reparation. Because, look, I think we should not forget that in the Western Armenia and in Cilicia, we have left our forefathers thousands of churches, monasteries, religious sites, uh, church and community related properties, uh, individual properties, uh, and uh, spiritual, religious, cultural objects of immense value. We cannot forget this. When we say we demand justice, this is not just a a general emotional conceptual notion it has a concrete implications that is to say we want back our properties <laughs> and as a first step towards uh, this direction we thought that uh, claiming the Catholic Crusade of Cilicia in seized, this is centuries old Catholic Crusade uh, from Turkey, could, you see, constitute the first step of a long process, the first legal step. And that is why. You see, we started this process. We filed a lawsuit. We presented uh, our case to the Constitutional Court, uh, uh, the Turkish Constitutional Court in Turkey, in Ankara. And uh, we believe that uh, this could open the door, which was closed before us for 100 years, we thought that this could become the first step forward, the first concrete step forward. Therefore, in conclusion, I think uh, we should move uh, from the stage of recognition to the stage of uh, reparation. And according to the international law, recognition implies uh, restitution, compensation. First of all, the return of churches. And this is the legal framework. And this is also the political framework because in the Armenian cause is a cause of justice. It's not just a legal case. Uh, it has its legal, its uh, community, church, and political dimensions. They are so much interconnected. So that is why I believe that uh, what uh, we did as Catholic Crusade of Cilicia was a historical, a unique, and unprecedented step. And we did that. And we did that on behalf of our nation. Because the church belongs to our nation. The Catholic said belong to our nation. That is our church. So we have a collective responsibility hmm, towards our church. And the church has a responsibility towards its people. The church and people uh, are united. Therefore, I think we should together, as a nation, as a church, continue this uh, legal process. And you may have heard that the reaction of Turkey was so aggressive, was immediate and aggressive. 
and we are happy about it. That means that uh, what we are doing uh, was uh, something that corresponds uh, our legal demands. When we started this process, I always reminded our people, remembering, reminding, and reclaiming, the three R's uh, should go together. We should commemorate, we should remember, we should remind uh, to the international community the cause of, of our martyrs, but at the same time, we must take concrete action. Your pontifical visit, Vavarda, was scheduled originally three years ago. However, you decided to cancel that trip because of the dire situation of the Armenian communities in Syria. Today you are here with us, but I am sure that your mind is with our suffering brothers and sisters in Syria. I think we would like to hear from you a brief update about the situation in Syria and what are some of the things that the Catholic Society is doing to ease the pain of the suffering community? We have a large Armenian community in Syria, which is in fact one of the largest Christian communities. And our community in Syria is deeply rooted in the history of Syria. You see, they are not just the newcomers, even before the genocide, there was an organized Armenian community with churches and institutions in Syria. And the Syrian Armenian community uh, is one of the most uh, uh, vibrant, dynamic, creative uh, communities in the Armenian diaspora. And therefore, we thought that by all means, uh, we have to protect, we have to preserve the Armenian community in Syria. In spite of this crisis, in spite of the tremendous challenges, concerns, difficulties uh, uh, that our people are facing in Syria. And this, uh, with this uh, firm commitment and with this clear uh, objective, we organized fundraising drives in all our communities, including the United States of America. And as you know, under the leadership of Sir Pazam, you see, uh, uh, you co collected uh, some funds, you send it to, to our uh, Catholic state in Antillas. We establish uh, a special fund to help our Syrian uh, uh, sisters, Armenian Syrian sisters and brothers. This is what we have been doing in the last four years. And we have to continue this process. As I said, in spite of uh, the huge difficulties that our people are facing in Syria, we believe that uh, recovery, reorganization, of our community in Syria. It's a must. It's a must uh, for our people, for home, our homeland, for the diaspora, for many good reasons. We cannot conclude this evening without talking about the mission of the Armenian Catholic State of Cilicia. And specifically, as you refer to it always, the heart of the Armenian Catholic State, which is the seminary. I would like you to tell us about our mission, about our seminary. How are we doing and what are your expectations? Seminary is not just a place uh, that we open ourselves uh, to science, to knowledge, to information. Well, this is important. Knowledge is important. But the seminary provides the kind of knowledge that generates responsibility. A kind of knowledge you see, that challenges and leads us to commit ourselves to the service of our church and people. That is the seminary. We are educated, we are formed in our seminary, and we become, as I said, a new person.
a person whose life must be dedicated for God, the church, and the nation. Therefore, the seminary remains on our agenda as Catholicos, as brotherhood, as a Catholic crusade. The highest and the most important item on our agenda. It has a top priority. It is at the center of our reflection and action. Well, I tell you something. Our annual budget, I speak as a Catholic as a whole, is around two million U.S. dollars. It's a peanut for you. It's not so much money. <laughs> you see, the other day uh, uh, I heard in a school, Armenian school, that you see the tuition, the, end, the yearly tuition is 10,011. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you see, these priests sitting there, they have important resp responsibilities. Uh, you know, their salary, monthly salary is, uh, how much? $200. $200. $200. You see? Two million, the annual salary. It's almost nothing, you see. You have institutions, the schools, the churches, uh, and you see their annual budget is more than two million. The Catholicos said, I'm speaking. You see? So I don't want to talk about the money. <laughs> you see? Uh, the financial resources, of course, are very important. So, but for us, human resources are much more important than the financial resources. The financial resources should be used to prepare uh, the human resources. That is what we are trying to do uh, in our seminary at our Catholic Crusade. And the <coughs> largest portion of annual uh, the budget of our Catholic Crusade goes to the seminary. Because, as I said, it is in the seminary that we prepare our clergy, the teachers, intellectuals, and people who will go to our church and people to serve them in different ways. Երեկո նավարտվեց սրտաբուխ նվիրատվությունները, որը հասավ 40,000 դոլարի, ինպաստ կիլիկյո կատողիկոսարանի կողմից տարվող ազգային աշխատանքների։ Հայ ժողովորդի միասնության հավատքի երեկո էր սուրցարքիս եկեղեցվո